Okay, so today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made these roll out shelves for my sink cabinet. Okay, so our kitchen cabinet now just has uh, two doors on the front and um, you know, we, th we throw everything down this bottom shelf here and it's not very efficient. So when I designed this cabinet here, I wanted to add something to it. I wanted to add some rollouts and uh, that always organizes stuff on the shelf. So it just makes it easier for you to grab it uh, and get them out there. So um, watch along as I go ahead and show you how I made these rather quickly and installed them. As with any woodworking project, you begin by ripping the wood to width. And you can see that this plywood is really, really warped. And uh, by cutting them down to smaller pieces, I'm hoping to reduce that down. And that uh, actually did work. So once the wood is cut to uh, width, you can see that these are old pieces that have some of the pocket hole screws in it. But um, now I'm cutting them to length and I have to um, clamp them down pretty tight uh, just so that they stay straight on the table saw platform. Now unfortunately during this process I actually dropped that particular table saw sled and uh, I had to make up a new sled in order to uh, cut my dados. Of course I couldn't cut my dados very much with this. Since then I've gotten a replacement piece to uh, fix this so it's all uh, back in shape and good. With all my pieces cut to their finished size, I'm going to go ahead and start banding everything. Now on the side pieces, the banding goes on all four sides. On all the shelf pieces, because they fit into a dado, uh, I only need the banding on the long side so I didn't have to get all four sides of banding there. Banding is relatively simple. Uh, I purchased this iron for like eight bucks. I have it to the highest setting. You just roll it across there. I have a banding cutter that uh, allows it to trim it up on each sides and then the ends. I flip it over on this cutting board here and use a sharp knife. And don't press down all the way and make one cut across because it will always split. What you want to do is just make three or four light cuts as you can see that I'm doing here and that allows you to get a nice clean cut on the edges without splitting out the banding wood. Now with all the pieces trimmed up I take them on over to my brand new table saw sled and if you want to see how to make this just look up in the upper left corner there. But I have my dado blade set to the width of the um, plywood which is a little bit smaller than three quarters so it took a little bit of uh, finagling with the pieces and the shims to get the proper size but once that's set up I can set my fence to make my center cuts and then my edge cuts uh, on all of the pieces so I'm gonna have three dados on my side piece I'm gonna have one towards the center it's gonna be uh, off center a little bit because the bottom shelf is gonna be a little bit higher than the upper shelf and then I'm cutting some dados on the very ends of each piece so that the bottom piece can slide up even and the top piece can slide down even into the uh, sides there. Now the idea of using the dado was to uh, help keep this wood straight because the wood's gonna all go in it's all the same length and it's all gonna slip into the same joints and this is gonna help to straighten out those pieces that are warped and it actually worked quite well so uh, all these uh, pieces that were somewhat warped uh, actually turned out quite uh, quite straight once it was all glued up and ready to be inserted. Also notice that I have a good side and a bad side of these pieces and you can see on some of these the bad side is facing up because I want the good side to be facing on the inside which is actually the maple. I don't know what Home Depot uses on the back side of their maple plywood but it's not the same. It has a different color and uh, grain pattern and um, in my opinion that's probably what's causing the warping because you have two different types of wood there on one side as opposed to the other. Uh, and this wood had a lot of uh, open gaps in it which made it difficult on some pieces because uh, 
that when you screw it in it would just the screw would just break apart that piece because there was an open gap inside now with all of my dados cut in the side pieces the next thing I want to do is measure out and put the location for all of my dowels to go in these are going to be the runners that are going to keep everything in place on the shelves and you don't want them to be too high but you want them to be high enough to keep everything in place but not so high that it's difficult to lay up everything into the shelves the nice thing is because it's gone from the edge to uh, my cuts once you make one whole setup uh, you can cut it out for all four pieces even though they're different even though two of the pieces are the same size and the other two are a different size so a little bit wider but because I'm working from the edge and from the same dado cuts um, it's easy enough to set up a stop block and measure them so that I can make all four holes in one side set up a stop block and make them again so at the drill press the first step is to uh, set my bit depth and what I'm going to use for that is I'm going to use the dado cuts for that depth because as long as they are the same uh, everything should line up now on my dowels I cut them slightly shorter than my uh, horizontal pieces my shelf pieces uh, that way if I set this depth to the same as the dado then when I drill out uh, the hole I have a little bit extra in there uh, just to make sure that the, da the dowels are not pressing the sides out that all the connection is coming from the shelves themselves selves on the glue up so once that's set I have a block there set to the distance and the fence set to how deep I want them to go into the shelf and I can make all four cuts on each piece or all four uh, holes on each piece as you can see I'm doing there and again this is just the 3 8 Forstner bit uh, I'm using a 3 8 inch dowel and the process is repeated for all four holes Now once my holes are drilled, as I said, I use the shelves as a, an alignment for the pieces, for my dowel pieces. And again, I'm going to cut them slightly shorter than the shelves, probably about a, maybe a sixteenth of an inch shorter. And this makes sure that when I glue up everything, that the contact is made with the shelf pieces and the dowels are not pushing it out. So I may have good contact with the shelves. The dowels have a little bit of play, but that glue is going to eliminate that. And there's really not that much pressure on them. I want the glue contact to mainly be on the shelves, which is going to give it all the support and strength. For me, glue ups are always the most stressful because you have a limited amount of time and you're trying to figure out exactly how you want to put it all together. Now, the first time I glued up this uh, smaller shelf, it was rather difficult and um, my idea didn't quite work out the way that I thought it would and um, I had to really adjust a lot of things and it just wasn't um, wasn't a smooth glue up for me but I started by adding glue into the dowel holes and then uh, putting them in hoping that I could keep them pressed together uh, as I put the uh, pieces or lay the pieces down into the clamps and uh, that didn't quite work especially with the uh, warped wood there so once I did the first time and got them all in, um, everything ended up gluing up square and nice and tight fits. However, on my second glue up, I learned so much from the first one that I found it much easier. I placed the Bessie clamps in the proper position. I put the spacers so that once the corners were uh, attached, they all lined up square. Uh, they were even it just went uh, it took about half the time as it did the first one and a lot less frustration so uh, that was really the a good learning tool by doing the first one fortunately both of them came up square both of them worked out really well uh, the first one you'll see in a minute I had to adjust but uh, the second one was just a perfect glue up and everything went well now with the dado glue up I'm sure that that would have been perfectly fine for these but I knew that the front and the back of the drawer really wouldn't be seen all that much so on the front I'm going to have my door panel on there and uh, that's going to be screwed into that front piece 
and then on the back you're never going to see that until you pull the shelves out for I don't know maintenance or repair or something like that so I decided to go ahead and put a couple of screws in each shelf and that's going to help uh, support it and just lock it down uh, you know a little bit more in the way of permanence but um, I just thought it couldn't hurt I had the screws there it's easy enough to do all I did was use a square and go ahead and line it up in the middle of the shelf and then use my drill bit and mark where each one's going to go and again I'm using the countersunk drill so that, that way I can uh, put the heads of the screws in to the wood and they wouldn't be protruding up so that it's nice and flush when I go ahead and put the drawer front on it. Now one of my shelves ended up too tall and it was probably about a sixteenth of an inch too tight with the uh, runners on top and bottom. So I decided just to use my joiner and I had it set on a very very shallow cut like about a 164th. So it took a number of times to slide it across there before I got it down but uh, that seemed to work the best. Uh, I could have sanded it. Um, there are you know, a couple other ways I guess you could have done it but um, I just thought that this would work the best and it was just uh, I could take off a little bit, try it into the opening, take off a little bit more until it finally fit and I got it down to where it fit perfect. Now I'm working on the bottom here so uh, again that's going to have um, the slider attached to it. Nobody's going to see the bottom so uh, only myself and uh, you, my YouTube audience, knows what I did here. So, but again, just slight, about a 116 too big. And again, this was the first one that I glued up, so I don't think I did the best job um, getting it all assembled perfectly uh, in place. But uh, for some reason, the one side was just a 16th of an inch lower than the other one. And it just needed some adjustment, which was easy enough to do. Now for me, the easiest way to put my runner in the dead center of the opening is to push it all the way to one side and then go ahead and measure that and then take that measurement and divide it in half. Now once I have that measurement for each side, I take that on over to the table saw and set my fence to those widths. Then with some scrap pieces of plywood that are about the length of the um, sliders, the drawer sliders, I make those cuts for each side. These are going to be used as my spacer for aligning the drawer slides so that they're exactly the same both top and bottom and pretty close to the middle. Now if you don't have them exactly in the middle of the shelves it's not going to really hurt anything but as close as possible is really a, a good idea and these were uh, pretty pretty darn close to exactly in the middle of the space that I had for each side. So with those two spacers, it's really easy now to install my runners in the middle portion of the opening here. And just pushing them tight up against that spacer and then screwing in the base pieces. That's relatively simple. Now again, it the key point here is to make sure that your runners or your drawer slides are running parallel to each other. In other words, they're 90 degree from the front. And you want to make sure that that's happening. And when using a spacer like this, which is even from both front to the back, ensures that they run parallel to the side so that the drawers are going to run parallel out. Now, I actually, in my previous video, you saw me use a pencil blank or pen blank that was actually the width that I needed to have so that when I put my drawer fronts on, or my door fronts in this case on, um, they will set in the proper, the proper distance and have a little bit of relief in front. And that's, I use that first to set the depth as to how deep I want those runners to be in and then just use my spacers to uh, lock them in parallel. Now for me it was much easier just to flip the cabinet over uh, once I got done with that so uh, when I did the I first I did the two bottom ones then I flipped the cabinet upside down and used gravity to help because this makes it much easier than trying to uh, you know work on it above and um, then I would add the two upper drawer slides with the cabinet flipped over and then I just flipped the cabinet back before I added the shelves Now installing the shelves is relatively easy. I already have the drawer slides set up in there 
and a lot of times you take the inner part of the drawer slide you take that out because that can detach and then you would just line it up and and screw it onto the drawers when you're working on normal drawers because you have a spacer that you would use for that in this case all i did was i just put the shelf in there because i wanted the shelf to line up so that it went back and forth very smoothly now i only had about an eighth of an inch on each side so by putting the shelf in there and using playing cards on each side of it I could use an even number of playing cards and line up that shelf so that it was split down the middle between the two sides. And then I would screw in the front um, piece of the drawer slide and I would do the same thing on the bottom, insert the cards, screw in the front piece of the drawer slide on the bottom. Then I would slide my shelves out, again place the cards in there to line it up the same on both sides. and. Um, most of the time the same number of cards work both on top and bottom but you want it to be a tight fit you don't want it to be loose you know where the cards are falling out so I uh, made sure that was a relatively snug fit and that would uh, align it and about the same number of cards now the easiest way to guarantee these have the same number of cards is just to set them side by side and make sure the stack is the same so once you have uh, once you slide in the cards where it's tight just take them back out, stick them side by side, or just count them off. And if it's an odd number, add one to the lowest number or the lowest uh, stack. Or if it's an even number, just divide them up so that they're even across both stacks. But that's just a very simple way to make sure that the shelf is lined up so that it has even space on both sides. Now the other key point when you're putting the shelves in is you wanna make sure when you put that first screw in, is that the shelf is parallel to the front. In other words, like the face uh, sinks in the same amount of distance, both at the top and bottom, because once you put that drawer front on, uh, you want to make sure that that is um, parallel or lines up with the face of the cabinet and doesn't really stick out at the top too much or the sides too much. So uh, that's the whole idea of getting everything as squared up as possible to the cabinet uh, face or reference of the cabinet. Now the sink cabinet has a lot of wasted space under it because a lot of times we have the plumbing, the sink comes down. But I did have enough space for each side where I can put roll out cabinets which is gonna help organize our stuff on the bottom of the sink. And I wanted to have everything roll out. So when the sink gets installed and the cabinet's installed, after it's installed, I'm gonna do a video on how to make some extra roll outs to fit in and around the um, sink plumbing underneath and everything else that goes back there because you have some electric outlet and a couple other things for the garbage disposal but um, in this video I used uh, I, I got some plywood from uh, Home Depot that was really warped and I had a hard time using it for any of the cabinets so I had to buy new uh, plywood for cabinets and uh, I was really disappointed in that I spent a lot of money on that plywood but had to rebuy it all. But I'm trying to use up that plywood so with the smaller pieces, they're not quite as warped as much or you cut them and, and you don't have as much warpage, I guess is the word you'd use for that. Uh, but I made these and they seem to work pretty good. And uh, it doesn't seem to affect it too much. Uh, the um, actual runners or slides sort of straighten the doors out, sort of straighten the woods out a little bit. And then also uh, the pieces in between uh, work for it too. These are self-closing so they automatically close when they go out. I did put some screws in on the ends here. Um, this is going to be covered in the back. You're never going to see until you pull the slider out. So it's going to be covered with a door panel here. Nobody's going to see so I felt the uh, extra screw biting in there wouldn't be a bad idea and so I went with that. These are just regular 3 8 inch dowels you know, for the runners here. And uh, I measured the bottom to fit most of the bottles that are this type. And um, this drawer is the skinnier one. That one's a little bit wider, uh, so that could fit a little bigger objects in it and things. So hopefully you enjoyed this video on uh, making this. Please stay tuned for other ones. Go ahead and subscribe. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I put a new video out. And um, I'm going to work on a few kitchen cabinets off camera just to get them done pretty quick because my shop is getting pretty full with all these cabinets building up in here and uh, I'll just point out key features that I uh, put in all of my cabinets so that you can see that but uh, we'll get back to some wood turning and a couple other things in future videos so um, I hope you stick around thanks for watching